Now, the, the title of your book is The End of the World is Just the Beginning. That's the one. Why that? We are dealing with the end of the world that we know. Russia is a more of a symptom of this than a cause. So <clears throat> to go back a little bit, in the world before World War II, if you had coal, oil, food, and iron ore, you could industrialize and try to make something of yourself. But if you failed to have one of those, you were probably a colony. At the end of the war, the Americans abolished the imperial system and patrolled the global oceans for everyone. And as a result, now you only needed one of those four and you could trade for the others. And so for the first time in human history, we were all on the same path, you know, from different starting points and going at different speeds, but we were all industrializing and we were all urbanizing. The problem, well, let's start with the opportunity. When you urbanize, you move from the farm and into town to take an industrial job. When you live on the farm, you have a lot of kids because they're free labor. You move into the city, you have a lot fewer kids because kids are no longer free. They're really expensive and noisy and annoying and dirty pieces of furniture. Uh, and you have fewer of them. And so your population starts to shift. It used to be that you have loads of children, a few young adults, fewer re retirees. Uh, it's kind of a pyramid. But as you urbanize, your pyramid opens up into a column because you have fewer kids, but everyone's living longer. And as long as your population is a column, economic growth is spectacular because you don't have to spend a lot of money on your kids. You're not old enough that you have a lot of retirees, but you got a lot of people in their 20s and 30s to build things and buy things. And then a lot of people in their 40s and 50s to do the investing. And the rich world was a population column from 1945 to 1992. And with the end of the Cold War, the developing world became a column in 1992 until now. The problem is that this is all temporary because birth rate keeps dropping, people keep living older, and your column eventually inverts into an open pyramid upside down. And now you no longer have children. You no longer have a replacement generation at all. And there aren't enough people in their 20s and 30s to buy everything. And there aren't enough people in their 40s and 50s to pay for the retirees. So this decade was always going to be the decade that most of the advanced world moves into mass retirement and the economic model collapses. And next decade was always going to be the decade that that happened to the developing world. And we find out recently that the Chinese have jumped the ship and this is their last decade too. So all of the globalized connections and consumptions that create the world we know, we are at the end of it. And we have to go back to a world where trade is more focused on the countries that have a better demographic and security infrastructure because the Americans are no longer patrolling the global oceans anymore. So we're losing the security ramifications of an open system. At the same time, we're losing the demographic capacity to support it in the first place. And that's all going down right now. So when you're, when you're saying that China has 10 years to go. At what, most. What do you mean by that? Well, we now know that they've lied about their population statistics and they're, they overcounted their population by over 100 million people, all of whom would have been born since the one child policy was adopted. So this is one of those places where they've got more people in their 60s and their 50s and their 40s and their 30s and their 20s. Now, what was the logic behind the one child? Was it that they were overpopulating? Mao was concerned that as the country was modernizing, the birth rate wasn't dropping fast enough and that the young generation was literally going to eat the country alive. So they went through a breakneck urbanization program which destroyed the birth rate. At the same time, they penalized anyone who wanted to have kids. And both of those at the same time have generated the demographic collapse we're in now. And the problem with that also was that they wanted male children. Yeah, there's a cultural aspect to that too. And obviously men can't have kids on their own. And what is the like ratio to men to women in the younger people in China now? Uh, before the data revision, with the last set of lies, it was about 1 to 1.2. It was the most distorted in the world, even more than Sri Lanka, where there had been a civil war for 30 years. Uh, since then, we don't have good sex-by-sex -sex data, but it's undoubtedly worse. And so what are the other problems that they're encountering that leads you to believe that they only have 10 years left? Well, without young people, we've seen their labor costs increase by a factor of 14 since the year 2000. So Mexican labor is now one third the cost of Chinese labor. 
Their educational system focuses on memorization over skills. So despite a trillion dollars of investment and a bottomless supply of intellectual property theft, they really haven't advanced technologically in the last 15 years. Uh, Mexican labor is probably about twice as skilled as Chinese labor now, even though it's one-third the cost. Uh, They've consolidated into an ethnic-based, paranoid, nationalistic cult of personality And it's very difficult for the Xi administration to even run it because it's not an administration anymore. No one wants to bring Xi information on anything. So like Putin lied to his face, for example, but last last February about the war saying, why would I invade Ukraine? And you can see in some of the the presses, the the defense guys in the back of the room, like they didn't want to say anything because Xi has a history of shooting people he doesn't like. Uh, and so they, the, the Chinese were the only country that was caught with their pants down when this all went down. Uh, the Biden administration is basically taking the trade policy of Donald Trump and running it through a grammar checker and putting it into institutions. So we now have tech barricades that prevent the Chinese from buying the equipment, the tools, or the software that's necessary to make semiconductors. In fact, he went so far as to say any Americans working in the sector have to either quit or give up their American citizenship. Every single one of them either quit or was transferred abroad within 24 hours. So the tech system is stalled. They don't have the young people to go consumption-led. They're completely dependent on the U.S. Navy to access international trade. They are the most vulnerable country in the world right now. And based on how things go with Russia, we're looking at a significant amount of raw materials falling off the map, specifically food and energy. And the Chinese are the world's largest importer of both of those things. So there, there's no version of this where China comes through looking good. And the challenge for the rest of us is to figure out how do we, in as smooth and quick as a process as possible, figure out how we can get along without them. Because they are going away. And they're going away this decade for certain. Well, if you say they're going away, clearly they're not just going to lay down. They're no, they're going to try to adjust. Yeah, they'll die. Right? They're, um, they're, <laughs> but... But how so? Do you think this is because, like, what is, other than, well, here here would be a big problem, right? Mm-hmm. Taiwan. Like, if if we impose the kind of sanctions that we've imposed on Russia, if if China decides to invade Taiwan and the world stands up and the world imposes sanctions on China, how does that go? Uh, very ugly for the Chinese. So, you know, say what you will about the Russian economy. It's corrupt. It's inefficient. It's not very high value add. But it's a massive producer and exporter of food and energy. You put the sanctions that are on the Russians on Beijing, and you get a deindustrialization collapse and a famine that kills 500 million people in under a year. And the Chinese know this. They can only push so hard. 